Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate cosine squared x and sine squared x. Before I do that, I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. Here I have all my videos archived and listed, and I also have a few interesting pieces there perhaps for your, uh, for your perusal. So integrating cosine and sine squared is actually quite straightforward, and it's done regularly by scientists and engineers. However, it's something, the, the technique for integrating these is something people forget. It's really just a trigonometric substitution. But oftentimes people perform unnecessarily complicated integration techniques and they get bogged down. We begin by using two trigonometric identities, which I'm not going to derive. These are that cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1 and cosine squared x minus sine squared x is equal to cos 2x. Note by the way we're using a double angle here and that is quite important. If we add the two of these equations and rearrange we see that cosine squared x is one half outside of one plus cos 2x. I'm going to call that equation number one. Thereafter if we substitute this equation in for cosine squared x and rearrange, we are able to get a similar expression for sine squared x. I'm going to call this equation number 2. The two of these equations will allow you to integrate cosine squared and sine squared. For completeness though I'd like to show you the half angle formulae. And these are obtained simply by substituting x over 2 instead of x. Or you could plug in 2x instead of x, no problem. That's something which many people do also. The next thing I'd like to do is an aside regarding the unit circle. If you're comfortable with that, we'll then skip ahead. But let's show you where we get, for example, uh, what the cos of naught and the sine of naught are. It all starts, by the way, with the definition of pi. Pi is defined as the circumference of a circle divided by its diameter. Thereafter, we get that there are two pi radians in a circle. And thereafter, we get all of the different relationships between the cos of, let's say, naught or the cos of twice pi and what and so on. We will need these in a moment. Like I said, if you're comfortable with this, you can uh, move on. If you're not, pause the video as I'm now going to move on myself. So I'd like to integrate cosine squared x and I'm going to do it along the interval of minus pi to pi. In order for me to do that, I need to substitute in equation number one. Thereafter, I need to integrate with respect to x. If I integrate 1 with respect to x, I'm simply going to get x. If I integrate cos 2x with respect to x, I'm going to get sine 2x divided by the derivative of the argument. The argument is twice x, its derivative is 2. So the derivative of cos 2x is sine 2x over 2. Next, I need to do, or I need to evaluate the limits. The limits here can be tricky because of the, the signs. Note that the sine of a minus number is minus the sine of a positive number. And you'll need that here. Also, the sine of 2 pi is equal to 0, as I've discussed in the past. Putting all, to the, all, of, all of those together, we see that the integral of cos squared x along the interval minus pi to pi is simply pi. We can do something very similar integrating sine squared x. The only difference will be that we have a minus sign here. However, that will not affect the answer. So we will also see that the integral of sine squared x along the interval of minus pi to pi is pi. So these are both very simple and straightforward integrals when you perform them using a trigonometric substitution. So thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my YouTube channel and you might also give universityphysicstutorials.com a view.